Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Pulling Ads with me, Rusty Surfer from The Four Guys, and the one, none other than Red Skull here. Hey! Hey! Yeah, well guys, we told you we would be back and we came through with our promise because you are getting episode number two of Pulling Ads. And if you really enjoyed the first one and you left us a comment or a like or anything, thank you. Thank yes, you very much it. for doing that. Yeah, and like I said, if you want uh, alerts from us, be sure to go ahead and uh, click the little bell the, to get the, uh, what do you call it? The notifications. 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 So guys, we are back. Um, for those of you who have not seen an episode of pulling ads or if you haven't been an old school listener and listen to the old podcast we used to do on it Thank let you. me go ahead and explain how this works guys me and red school here are avid paper collectors yes yeah we like the paper floppy gotta copies paper. Gotta, gotta feel it touch it caress it smell it <laughs> there you go <laughs> anyways <laughs> we have both gone into our personal collection and pulled out very specifically, some books that are true to us and that we just found advertisements and that we like. So we are going to share those with you guys today. Because who doesn't love the advertisements in between all of that stuff? I mean, come on. It's exactly. Great, great stuff. I mean, how many um, different muscle ads are you going to see over and over and over and over again? It could be just yes. like Arnold. Really, boy. Seven yeah. days, I would be tough. <laughs> exactly. Well, I guess that since last time we let you start it off, this time it's going to be all me, guys. Yes. All right. So the first issue that I'm pulling out is actually Adventure into Fear number 10 from October at 1972. Ooh. And um, we have the, you know, we have the cover over in the corner, but I'm just going to flash. Beautiful, beautiful cover. Beautiful. Yes. Issue. Man thing stuff, man. I think it was his fourth appearance. I think it's his fourth. But anyways, you know, flipping through this, I got to the centerfold thing once again of all the little advertisements or whatever where you see like all the paid out space. And one of them just caught my eye. Um, and enjoy an exciting romantic look. Impressive. Anytime. Not just now. Anytime. Okay. Any, you say anytime. 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 And it's a quick change to your suit, your mood times. I don't know why it says that. That doesn't make any sense on there. But whoever wrote, good job, whoever wrote this. Yeah. But anyways, you can get three pieces for $6. You know what those pieces are? Mm, what are they? Okay. You can send away for a mustache. Ooh. Some sideburns. <laughs> and a Van Dyke. <laughs> <laughs> How old school it. is that? Yes. Yeah. My thing is, is you got this guy with like these little paste on facial hair or whatever. What if you go out on a date with that, you know? It's going to start like falling off mid-date or whatever. You're going to kiss her and she ends up with the mustache on her. <laughs> <laughs> like something doesn't feel right about this facial hair on yeah, you, honey. You know. yeah. uh. But no, I saw this advertisement. Um, you can get them in all different hair colors, blonde, black, light brown, medium brown, dark brown. They got gray. Ooh. Hey. Hey, there you go. Um, or, you know, Auburn. Whatever. And um, silver. S what? Silver. Silver. Okay. Silver. Okay. Silver. All right. Yeah. Well, you can get all six or all three for $6. Hmm. And um, <laughs> Masculiner Company. That is the name of the Masculiner Company. <laughs> Masculiner <laughs> Company. I just noticed this. That is that's a good, that's a good name. Uh, they're coming out of... Orange, New Jersey. So. Yeah. But it's actually fitting. I can see this, why they would put this in a comic book, because what if you want to be Tony Stark? You know, you get the little true. pieces, or if you want to, you know, have your disguises. Okay, this is my, this is who I am, and then, oh, look at me. Da, 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 you know. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's not a bad idea there. Yeah. I mean, I bet you there were a bajillion little kids who ordered this. My only thing is, is like, it's $6. And $6 in 1972 for some fake facial hair. That's a lot. I mean, what was it? Not even five years ago, you could pay uh, 250 or what was it? 160 something dollars for an airplane. So well, well, let's see. How 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 uh, much does this issue of yours cost? It's about what? 20 60? cents. 20 cents. 20 cents. Holy. So you can be basically getting 30 comics or one mustache set. 
Yeah. Yeah. That's a good comparison. That is a really good comparison. Yeah. 1972, six bucks for fake facial hair, too much money. So, what do you got for us? Well, keeping in the tradition of facial hair, I found something out of Sergeant Fury, um, issue number 21. Uh, this is from 1965. And this is actually kind of personal to me because I had this, actually. Did you? Yes. It's the new hair. Um, make your hair neat and trim. Okay. New hair. Yes. So if you can take a look at the pick on the side, you know, it's for men, it's for children, it's for women. And you don't need to have a barber. You need to, Basically, you just comb your hair and it cuts it for you. So what? Oh, it's like a razor? Yes. So you had a razor okay. blade that was inserted inside of the comb. So when uh -huh. you ran the teeth of the comb through your hair, it trims your hair. But let me tell you, man, it's the most painful experience you'll ever imagine. Because not only does it cut, it rips. Ow. Yes. So that the thing is just, I hated it. I mean, I was a little kid. My mother would break that thing out. I'd be like, no, I'd be in tears. I'd just like, don't touch me with that thing. And you put it through my hair, and I'll tell you, just like, oh, my God. I, there's no no feeling worse than that. I'm telling you, I'd rather get kicked in the nads and have that hair comb in my hair. Okay, so in the early 90s, I was afraid of scissors, and um, yeah, I didn't like hair. Yeah, your hair. I can understand. I, I yeah, all right. <laughs> yeah, you know. But anyways, they bought this thing for me called a Floby. I don't know if you remember what a Floby is no. or if you saw an infomercial for it or whatever. It's basically a hair vacuum. Hmm. I don't know how to describe it. It's like a vacuum where in the inside there's little, like, blades or whatever yeah. with a guard and you go like this over it and it cuts and vacuums your hair up at the same time Ooh, okay interesting and it was weird man it that freaked me out even more because now not only was there um a razor like moving coming yeah. at me but it's also a loud vacuum and like three-year-old me is like oh my gosh what is this machine like, still yeah exactly <laughs> oh but yeah so. you can get this razor comb uh mill it away but there's no, I don't see any price in here. But uh, yeah, safe to use, and you can use it for one and a half year for a one and a half year old child. Okay. Oh, it's just I saw this, that means, and it hurts. Yeah, I saw this, and it just it brought tears to my eyes reading this because you know days of oh, as a child tormented by that comb. <laughs> oh. Anyways, <laughs> why not just use scissors? I know exactly. I mean, come on, really? Just imagine putting a razor blade through here. But anyways, enough about me. Enough about that. What else have you got for us? Okay, so my second issue that I have for us is from July 1981, and it is Avengers 209. All right. Yeah, by J.M. Dematis, who I know you really like, yep. and then Alan Kupperberg. So, yep. yeah cool thing and um this is one of those cool lineups with the avengers as you can see where it has like wanda mm -hmm. and it has vision yep. and blue beast and everything so very cool comic um the ad in here though is right up your alley like it, i think there's a few people listening that listen that are like know us that this would be like straight for them especially all you uh Y'all sci-fi fans. So, now the greatest space fantasy of all is on radio. Star Wars, starring Mark Hamill as Luke Skywalker and Anthony Daniels as C-3PO. And it's a thrill to the newly expanded adap adaptation of A New Hope on your local national public radio. So it was actually, like, after story to A New Hope by Mark Hamill. Wow. Yeah. That is kind of pretty cool. Yeah, and it makes me wonder if there's, like, recordings of this out there just – or if it's yeah. even, like, officially a part of Star Wars lore. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and it says, May the Force be with you. And, um, yeah, 1981. So that was a while after the movie came out. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. Uh, well, 81, I think uh, Empire Strikes like Back the, was right around that time. It was, like, I think a year before. year, two, year before. We were on that. Gosh, my goodness! So it was seventy-seven, <laughs> and then what? Seventy-nine? No, I think it was eighty or eighty-one. Actually, around that time. When did that. Return come out then? Eighty-four. Good lord! 
I remember. Yeah. I, I can actually t remember the day that I saw um, Empire Strikes Back in the movie theater when it came out. That's cool. Yeah, I mean, my neighbors took me. There was this girl that I had a crush on, and she, you know, I was young and sitting. Better next, be careful. Sitting next to her, <laughs> sharing an orange soda and a bucket of popcorn. That was pretty cool for a little boy. That's cool. Yeah, the Empire Strikes Back, man. Driving movie theater on my bean bag. That's cool. Yes. But, God, I love Star Wars. That's what I would want to do. Yeah. If I was alive when they came out, totally would have wanted to do the whole driving thing with yes. these. Yes. Yeah. I wanted to do that because we have a drive-in actually really close to where I live. Mm -hmm. And um, I wanted to do that with the new um, Star Wars movies, like with Rogue One and with uh, Force Awakens. Mm -hmm. And I, I really want to do that. I kind of want to do Wolverine or Logan mm -hmm. on it too. So yeah. we'll see what happens. Cool. But no, this is really cool. I did not know that they had something like this still around in, I guess, the early 80s where they're going to do radio shows like this. Cool stuff. Maybe we can find a recording about it. I know some of you Star Wars fans are hating us for not knowing the years of when the movies come out. Sorry. <laughs> We're going to get some hate comments, comments down crack. below. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let us know in the comments. Don't thumbs us down, please. Oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah so what is your uh second comic all right well i have got uh sergeant fury number 420 as you can see in the pic next to us yeah um this is actually from 1987 oh a little bit later a little bit later but you know what think about it it's still 30 years old true 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 you know? i mean i mean for me it's like i think 87 yeah that's not that long ago and then it's like yeah wow well, i am old that is long ago <laughs> i mean and and in that theme, you know, I see this ad in here. Get muscles in seven days. Dynamic tension starts getting results. You can feel and your friends will notice big, useful muscles. You know, kind of like we were joking about before. You know, we see all these muscle ads in comics for years and years and years. Yeah. And what, what I find hilarious, as you can see in this picture right here, that the um, the guy, it's a, it looks like it was taken from the 1950s. No, those are the same ad pictures from this, the 1950. I promise yeah. you, man. I mean, this is 1987, and they're using the pictures from the 50s. It's like they couldn't update. Exactly. Like, come on, uh -huh. at least put a picture of Arnold Schwarzenegger in there or somebody like there that. There are some with some, Arnold in it. But yeah. Like, this company, it's like, really, guys, you couldn't just update the picture a little bit. And you know, of course, you got. I love these pan. You know, these pages where you have all these different panels of different ads you can get. You know, you have this one here that you can see. Uh, you can get 50 warriors uh, for 495. You know, Vikings, knights, ninjas, Robin Hoods, Romans. This is kind of cool. I, I could see myself getting something like that as a kid and playing with it. Yeah. You know, but then of course you get all these other ads in here for comic book stores. Yeah. You know, and uh, it's pretty cool because back then you have all these comic book stores that are throwing these ads and you know buy our catalog, give us a call. You know, basically it was a great way to find out or define that comic that you want pre-internet yep and you know what's crazy is i'm actually looking coincidentally the comic page that i'm on has one of those lists too yeah. and you see those titles where it's like you know the big name titles where it's like avengers captain america uh, x-men and stuff like in mine it has an avengers you can get issues 16 through 19 of the original avengers yeah three issues okay twelve dollars i wonder if they'll still honor that price I know, right? I mean, nice. Is there a disclaimer on the, on the bottom? <laughs> yeah. You can get Captain America 100 for $15 in this. I think we need to, we need to um, give them a call. Don't yeah, you ever want to do that? Just give, a, give one of these ads a call to see if they still exist? But here's an even crazier one. Amazing Spider-Man 41 through 50. Okay, and mind you, 50 is the first appearance of Kingpin, I think. $4.50. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah you know what? Crazy. I have an ad in here, you know, with, with, if you can see the side... Miss an issue, we probably have it along with 100,000 more from years ago. Send your list and self-addressed stamped envelope for our selling prices to Dave's Comics. Or you can give them a call. Most comics from the last two years are still cover price. I wonder if they're still cover price today. I don't know. I, I gotta add. I'm, you know what? There's a number here. I'm just for shits and giggles. I say we give it a call to see. Do it. To see. Okay. It's probably yeah, 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 this yeah. number's no longer in service, but you know what? Why not? Let's have a little bit of fun. See what we get all right and Let's let me see here. call here wow it's ringing so fun. i'm gonna
gonna get a Korean woman answering the phone. Yeah. Hello. Oh yeah, I'm sorry. Is this uh, Dave's Comics? It is. Can I help you? Oh wow, yeah. Um, actually, I just saw an ad in a comic, and I'm just kind of curious if you guys were still open and existed. Well, unfortunately, the owner of the business passed away in April, and the store closed in July. We're operating out of our warehouse. Oh, my condolences. So, uh, but you're still kind of operating. Where yeah, where are you calling from? I am out in um, uh, Portsmouth, Virginia. We're going to be set up in Tidewater at the convention that's coming up. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, that's out in uh, May, I believe, right? I'm not sure of the yeah. exact date right now. If you go to Dave's Comics uh, Facebook page, it should have a listing of that. Also, the Virginia Comic Con might have a listing. We're working with Brett, who is who puts on the Virginia Comic Con shows. Okay, great. Well, I'll definitely have to check so that he out. Probably has a listing of what he'll have a listing of what shows are coming up and everything. Also, what kind of uh, what is it you're looking for? Well, I really enjoy like Sergeant Fury and Nick, uh, 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 Sergeant Fury and Sonic Commandos, as well as Sergeant Rock stuff. Well, I I have a I have a few Sergeant Furies. Um, I have some Sergeant Rock. When we're set up at the show, we'll have some stuff that uh, I'll have there for Sergeant Fury. I won't have a lot, but I will have some there. But we also do mail order. We'll be shipping stuff all over. So um, if you want to send us a list, you can send a list um, to Dave at davescomics.com. That's our website. Mm -hmm. If you send a list of Sergeant Fury that you're looking for and just say that you called here and you talked to Marlon, which I am, okay. M-A-R-L-O-N, I'll see what I can do for you and I'll let you know what we have in crisis and everything. Well, I appreciate that, Marlon. Thank you so much. And what other titles do you like? Oh, my goodness. Uh, I collect a, a lot of I image. I for 34 years. Yeah, actually, no, no, what's, what's ironic is um, I found your number in a copy of Sergeant Rock, issue number 420, dating back from 1987. Was that in the mid early 90s, I think? Yeah, 1987 is the date of the issue, date of this advertisement. Okay, right. Was it saying missed an issue, or are you yes. traveling this summer? What was the ad? Yeah, missed an issue. We probably have it along with 100,000 more from years ago. Yeah, right. So I just... Yeah, I, just I, I work for Dave's open in 1982. Oh, okay. Wow. So it's been quite a so while. I've been with him uh, through this since the beginning, and unfortunately, I'll see it through to the end. Very nice. Very nice. Well, Dedicated. thank you so much for your time. I have to say, it's a very odd feeling. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. really. I mean, I've known the guy since we were teenagers, and, oh. and he passed at 61. So. Oh, man. Well, good for you to keep uh, his uh, business alive for him. That is just wonderful. We're trying. We're trying. But anyway, we will be set up in Tidewater. We're going to be doing the next Charlotte Con. And there's a couple other things coming up. So if you don't mind traveling, there'll be a show around this area also. No, not at all. Um, definitely have to check that out. Will we be at NovaCon at all? On the Virginia Comic Con site and look at Dave's Facebook page. I think they have listings there also. All right, I'm definitely going to be checking that out, and I'm seeing you guys at the show. All right, but like I say, if you want to send a list, I'm more than I'm more than happy to, to look through the inventory and let you know what I have. In there. I will definitely be doing that. Thank you so much. All right, well, you have a good day then. You too. Thanks again. Not a problem. Right. Bye. Bye. Whoa! That was cool. <laughs> what? <laughs> Uh, someone actually answered. Answered. And it an, was legit. And, and from an ad from 30 years ago, and he remembers the ad. That's funny. That is that awesome. Is, yeah. Who knew that we would... We probably made his day, I hope, at yeah, least. He really. seemed like he wanted to talk about it a lot. I know, he did. He did. And I'm like, I didn't really, really want to say, well, you're re we're being recorded right now. No, no, no. That would have ruined his train of thought. That is yeah, so it good. Have. It would have. Oh, yeah. my gosh. That, that made my day. That made my day. Cool. So... Oh, okay. Well, how, how do we how do we top that off? Yeah, <laughs> I know, any, right? Do you have any honorable mentions for us? Okay, I have one honorable mention from the Avengers 209 issue, um, and it's only because I didn't know that this kind of thing really happened before Almagom. 
Um, two heroes, two legends together on April 28th. Spider-Man or Superman and Spider-Man. If you miss this one issue, this one, you'll never forgive yourself. It's a gym shooter, John Buscema, a Joe Sino. Sh- that's how you say his name? Sino? Yeah. And then it's Blockbuster. Yeah. Okay. So those three put this together. And uh, what's funny is in the background, um, it has Doom and a Superman character that I probably should know that I don't know. He's purple. I don't. I don't know if you could see him. Yeah. I don't know who that is. Not sure either. But no, there's the ad, <laughs> full blown. I didn't know they did these crossovers though before Amagong. Yeah, they had. There was a few, not too many, and they weren't yeah. all that good either. Uh, <laughs> but hey, if anybody there knows who the purple dude is, leave a comment below. Let us. Yeah, know. let us know. Yeah, I'm curious now. Someone's probably sitting there like, "You guys are so dumb." <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Yeah, well, you're educating us. Yes. We're learning, too. Not only are we teaching you, but you're teaching us. Let us know. Yeah. All right. Well, that is my honorable mention. What is your honorable mention on All right. this? Well, mine, as you can see through uh, the pick on the side, is we have this game. Actually, I remember when I first saw this advertisement back in the 80s. It's for Captain Power and the Soldiers of Fortune. And basically what it is is... Um, when you're watching the TV show, you have this toy that you hold, and you can fire the toy at the TV screen, and you can basically have your ship get damaged, and the guy will fly out of the cockpit, as cool. well as it damages the character on the TV screen, which was pretty innovative back then in 87, um, especially when you didn't have all of this internet and all the, the special stuff like we have today with uh, video games, you know, connected. Spring-loaded toys, man. Yeah. And yeah. it, I mean, it was basically all it really truly was was a light sensor, you know. Yeah. And you now, and the thing is, though, I've as I've learned recently, these things wouldn't work on TVs today. They have no, they to won't. be on glass screen TVs. Uh, tube TVs. Yeah. We're, yep. With the glass screen, because now we don't have glass screens anymore. Well, what it really is is a lot of these things are a light uh, sensor thing. Yep. So what happens is you pull the trigger or whatever and aim it at the TV. Mm-hmm. Everything on the TV flashes black for a split second besides what you're pointing at. And that will be the white spot, and that's how it will detect where you're aiming on the screen. Very cool, very cool. Now, the same thing with the uh, Nintendo Zapper yeah, for Duck Hunt the gun, the, the Duck Hunt gun, yeah. Yep. Same thing. Yeah. Well, that is what I got today. Wow, that was a that was, that was an exciting... Uh... Exciting episode. Yes, God, I Someone answered that. the phone. Now we just gotta get one of those 90 advertisements where it's a phone game and one of them still work. Definitely, that would be really that's cool. On the, that's on the agenda. Maybe, just maybe, next episode I'll pull out a bunch of 90s comics and we'll see what we can do. Oh, I like that idea. Maybe I'll pull out some 90s as one as well. Sounds good. 90s pulling ads? Yeah. Okay. Hey, it's always fun. Well, I think to, we'll... I'll have to do that down the road. Maybe another issue or two and yeah. do a 90s one. Yeah, that'd be fun. That'd be fun. Very cool. All right, guys. Well, that is going to conclude this episode of Pulling Ads. And as always, I'm Rusty Surfer, and I'm here with Red Skull with four guys in a comic. Ale Hydra. And um, we will catch you next time. But be sure to tune in soon for the new episode. And also, you know, give us a like, follow, subscribe, go to the social medias, comment. Listen to Let us know how we're doing. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. New podcast every Saturday. Yeah. Good stuff. All right, guys. Hey, we'll catch you next time.